All right, well, welcome to Mouthful with Marissa Pitts. And please make sure to take the time to love, like, follow, and subscribe right now. The, today's guest is... Eric Barnes and Vocal, who is a vocalist, and Jared Tomlin, who's lead guitarist from Strong Arm and The Bullies. They are a street rock and roll band from Southern Calabama, California, Alabama, <laughs> California. Can't even speak. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing today? Hey, how's it going, Marissa? I'm going good, Jared. Good, good. I'm going good. Yourself? Awesome. Yes, just want to make sure that all of our uh, vocals do work on here. Uh, Restream is a, a temperamental bitch, that's all I can say. <laughs> I do like I could use it. It is true. It is true. We all are. We all are. Um, but thank you so much for coming on as we talked about your um, long awaited album, Drive On, is dropping today for everybody to go ahead and catch on here. And I just want to know why 18 years as a fan? Why did it take you all 18 years? <laughs> well, there are a lot of reasons. But uh, yeah, uh, so back in our heyday, right, <clears throat> in the early mid two thousands, uh, we were recording, we were playing all the time, um, and we had big plans. You know, we were going to record, uh, we were getting ready to record a new album. Uh, when I took a job uh, as a contractor and went over to Iraq, so at the time, the whole idea was I would just be gone for a year. I'd come back, we'd kind of pick up where we left off and keep rolling. But uh, as, as uh, often happens, life had other plans for me. So uh, I went off in another direction. Um, the band kind of stayed together. We'd play some shows here and there when we had the opportunity, um, but just living in different places and uh, kind of even pre the technology that we have now, you know, uh, as we'll talk about a little bit more with the recording of the, the album. Uh, having band members in different places made it incredibly difficult to collaborate, songwrite, to get together, to record. Uh, studios are very expensive, uh, you know, and we weren't uh, really in a financial position to just go in and and, uh, and buy a bunch of studio time. Studio time. So, um, yeah, I mean, all in all, it was, you know, it was kind of the plan all along, I guess. Um, but uh, as, as time went on, it was just sort of that, Okay, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. And then finally, in uh, was that 2022? I think we uh, we finally said, you know what? We're going to get to it. Like we're in a position we can make this happen. We have the technology, you know. Uh, so uh, so we started the process. And I'll shut up so Jared can talk. <laughs> yeah, and then Jared, um, just real quickly, we're talking about. I know Eric had talked about technology, right? And being able to um, come together as a band and create music, even though you live in different states. So how yeah. was that process for you two? Uh, well, I mean, it, it it really sprung from some of the work that that Eric was doing uh, with another band on on our record label, Rebellion Records, <clears throat> that that we were actually recording vocals. Uh, Eric was singing with them, still is, uh, with Live by the Sword, and we were recording vocals and uh, you know having some success, you know, with a home studio having you know nice quality recording. So. That's kind of where we we got the idea. Say, like, well, if we were able to build a studio here that handle you know drums and and you know a full band, that we might be able to pull off pull off this album. And uh, you know you know big shout out to to Wilder and those guys because honestly working with them, watching you know their steps is what guided us to to set up how we were going to record the process for recording. And 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 we just kind of took it took it off of the off of their template. Um, and, and and went from and went from there so we we, we basically built purposely built a purpose-built studio uh in in my basement <laughs> that, that we affectionately call fort Flyside. so <laughs> you call it what fort fly side it just doesn't it doesn't make any sense there's no real story okay because i was like what is that <laughs> do you um do you guys do you guys help record other bands also for another uh, source of revenue or is it just for your bands we do some recordings for for other people in the area. We even have uh, some some young rap artists kind of have come through, uh, some songwriters who who maybe aren't necessarily trying to you know make their own music, but at least get it down enough to to, to get people interested in in their songs. So you know we we try to uh, you know fill that space for an affordable you know solution to the area for someone who just needs something that's quality recording. Okay. Yeah, and I was definitely 
surprised to hear right now that this album, Drive On, is from a studio in the basement because the quality is insane. I mean, it's really good. Like, you guys just played in characters, and I love me some characters, but their sound quality is one of the worst ever. So, luckily, I know your song, so I can like sing along. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but actually, listening and hearing, I mean, I, I am shocked to know that that's from a studio. And it's great to me because it just shows how much we don't need the big, the big studios, the ones that are going to tell you what you have to write, what you have to say, who's going to take all the money when you make a profit. Right, right. And that's, you know, for us to be able to, you know, just make the decision. It was just a decision. Hey, let's do this song. It goes on the, you know, on the thing and, and we record it. So, yeah, it's definitely a, a really handy to have. And, and, and we're, we're excited to do more in it uh, with okay. this, and, you know, other projects. But yeah, everybody. Uh, is you know sort of chomping at the bit now and i wanted to put that in there too with eric was talking about the band kind of, they all rallied around the album because it's something we've been meaning to do for a long time uh but about halfway through the process that's when the idea started coming up for what's going to happen on the next album and what's going to happen for the next tour and the next time we go to europe and so on so on so it kind of sort of solidified in our mind that that we don't have to just have another one and done uh, that that we can actually you know sort of be back. <laughs> nice, I love it. And how did you guys meet? I mean, I know you're from back in the day, right? Uh, a, lot, a lot of chaos. Right? Yeah. yeah, I met you two at the exact same time at a at a party down in yeah. right. um, <laughs> I remember. I barely <laughs> remember. I stay most, meeting Marissa Pitts. On, honestly, I have to say, most of my memories, I don't know. People are like, oh, do you remember that? I'm like, no, I was pretty drunk. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you guys like, how, how did you decide you wanted to make a band together? Well, we, uh, we originally met in Okinawa, Japan, uh, in probably, was it 99, 98, 99, something like that. Uh, uh, yeah. So I was, I was an active duty Marine and I was stationed over there and, uh, you know, I was just like, you know, young skinhead bopping around, looking for a scene, looking for guys to hang out with, seeing if there were any shows, punk rock, whatever. And uh, ran into uh, uh, Ricky, who was our original drummer. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ricky introduced me to Jared. And uh, they were uh, they were both over. They were still in high school at the time. They were like juniors, seniors in high school. But they were the first like punk rock, skidhead type guys I met over there. So we started rolling around. We met a few other guys along the way. Uh, they had a they had a band. They were doing uh, I forget the name of it, but they were uh, they were doing a lot of covers and things and anyway it was just like one of those like kids playing punk rock having fun whatever you know but uh yeah yeah so we uh became became great friends over there and just talked about you know what was next and uh jared and i had messed around a little bit even with just like a couple of songs like there was no real band there was nothing like that but we had started messing mm -hmm. around with some songs and uh and me singing a little bit and, and he thought i was all right at it so uh yeah, then uh, we all, uh, you know, got to California. I was stationed out at 29 Palms, yep. and uh, I was going to get off active duty. Uh, so we started looking at, at what was coming up next. And uh, Jared, he's he's originally from Southern California. Um, so, uh, you know, we just kind of said, hey, like, let's do it. Like, we talked about it. Let's get together. Let's make something happen. Uh, so we got a house in uh, in Riverside. Didn't know anybody, literally didn't know anybody, didn't know anybody in the scene, didn't know anybody in a band, didn't know anybody. We didn't like, you know, I mean, we knew where to go for punk rock shows because, you know, yeah. like anyone, right? But uh, yeah, we were just kind of like shot in the dark. Let's go. Let's start our little band. Let's see what happens. And, you know, here we are today. So. Here you are today. I love <laughs> it. I love it. Jared, what were you doing in Japan? <laughs> I got to know. What were you doing? I was in high school. I'm a Marine. I was a Marine dependent. Oh, together in Okinawa. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Joe's I learned. I learned art. something new every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, we, can you speak Japanese at all? Very little and very poorly. It would be. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> like just no. Oh, just spent a no. long time now <laughs> too. Yeah, yeah. Whatever Pakito is in Japanese, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into some music. I know people want to hear some of the stuff. Uh, I am going to get back a little bit. It is on your album, but it was also actually on your very first album out in 2005 that you dropped. Um, it has, it's Honor Amongst Outcasts. 
And I want to know, one uh, as one of your iconic songs, you guys play it, we sing to it. I mean, it's definitely like, like when I think of Strong Arm and the Bullies, this is like one of the songs that like 100% is top there. But why did you add it to this album? You want to speak to that, Jared? I mean, yeah, Chris, it's a pretty simple answer, really. But <laughs> go Chris, ahead. Uh, Chris has, uh, you know, been our drummer now for for a decade, and you know, even though we've only been able to do you know a show a year or so, um, but that's always one of his favorite songs, and he was always, I think, a little frustrated that he it, that he didn't get to be the one to record that original <laughs> album, which we did when we really didn't know what we were doing. We were very very new, you know, at be recording artists at that time. And, uh, you know, and he's just, he's an amazing drummer. And, and when, you know, it's one of the first songs that when we had our very first practice together, when we heard what was going through his mind for the drums on that song, uh, it was just instant for it's everybody. It's way cleaner. I have to say it's way cleaner. And those who don't know, Chris Daly, I'm his drummer out of Authority Zero. You can always catch him. The guy is like everywhere drumming yeah. for everybody um, nonstop. And I was really glad that it was included. Um, it was one, definitely one of those songs that I've always felt uh, I, I was an outcast. I um, still am an outcast, I guess you could say, and yeah. that what, what I feel like society wants me to yeah. be and what I should have. Um, and what does it mean when, when you have honor amongst outcasts? Like, what does that mean for you guys? Yeah, I think it's um, it, everything for me, like in songwriting, you know, even if I have like a, a spark. It's, a, it's about something specific and it, it turns into an idea right so it's this this concept of uh uh you know like you said you know we're we're, we're kids who came from these different places we were always kind of outcast we felt a little different we always felt like we were a little on the outside we never quite understood why these societal standards exist existed because we didn't really have an interest in participating in them um and, uh, you know, and in some way, you know, it's like even, you know, whether you want to fight the system, whether you want to change the system from within, uh, whether, you know, you just you basically just don't you don't agree with it. Right. So um, it's sort of uh, the, the message, I guess, was really just uh, of unity, you know, for for all of us who felt that way that, you know, you're not alone. There is a community out there for you, too. Um, and. Uh, you know, together we're stronger, right? So yeah, and, uh, and, and also that, always... that standard, right? That standard of having of, of honor, you know, that we can all trust each other, put our faith in each other, in that community that we've built together. And that's what I want to say. Um, there is almost zero backstabbing amongst yeah. our friends, amongst yeah. our and I, my family in that sense, right? Like I think we all. I am closer with you all, and like what I my friends, I guess you can say from there than my own family. In that yeah. sense, like I know I can call you. I mean, I luckily come from a really good family. I, I yeah. do. I'm not from my family dad. I come from a phenomenal family. I'm very blessed in that sense. But they never got me. They still don't get me. <laughs> like, they're still just like, when are you get your shit together, Marissa? And I'm like, never. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and play Honor Among Outcasts. Uh, we are live right now on the Marissa Pitts Show. Turn 
<laughs> All I can say is thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris, for making yeah. them <laughs> throw it on the album. Yeah, yeah. And, we might have quit the band if we didn't put that one on the new album. Yeah. I, I have to say, yeah, if you guys never play that in a show, I think you would throw a riot up. Like, right <laughs> away, there would be a riot. Um, now, in a world um, that is driven by singles, every artist out there is just dropping singles. They actually are dropping all their songs as a single first and then dropping the album. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's a great thing. Sometimes it's not in the sense that not every single lives up to a good name. Sure. Um, and this is one of the times that when I got the album and usually when I get an album, you know, I'm like, I love at least half the songs, a couple I'm like, oh, okay, not bad. And then a few, I'm like, why? <laughs> I was like, what, what were you thinking? Who made you put that on the album? Yep. This was one of the rare albums that every single song could be not only a single, but a standalone out there. Um, and it's a great representation of, I think your maturity as a band. Um, and as as humans, as people, right? I mean, we're a lot older than back in 2005. Um, our life lessons, what we've experienced, and we've all experienced, I think, a lot of pain at a younger age than most people have. Um, and then the tenacity to, to, to go through. So the the lead song you have on your opening track is Drive On, which is self-titled for your album. Um, what was the meaning behind this song for you guys? Yeah, I think that was it, right? It's a it's a message of of perseverance, essentially. So you know, it it starts out like the first line in the song is is darkness is setting in, and it's it's kind of about uh, <clears throat> you know that that battle, the struggle that a lot of us have had with uh, with with mental health or depression or um, sometimes literally just you know like some bad shit going on in your life, you know. Um, and then kind of finding the uh, the strength and the will to, j to just push through, you know. So drive on was one of those terms that like we used in the military, you know. So it's like when you're tired on a run or you're out, you know, on a, on a, on a march, you know, with your with your full combat load or whatever. And, uh, and you're tired and you're worn out, but you still got all these other people relying on you. You can't quit. You got to go, you know. Uh, so you drive on, right? <clears throat> um so that was it, you know, in the chorus, it's like, uh, you know, like the, when the storm crowd, when the storm clouds are gathering around, uh, when the wolf pack's closing in, uh, just whatever the fight is, whatever the obstacle is, whatever the challenge is, just, uh, um, you know, it's, it's not diminishing the struggle, you know, the struggle's real. It, it always exists. It's just about, um, doing your best to, to try and, and push through the, the adversity, I guess. So, you know, not, not a super complex song. I don't think I get super deep in the lyrics or anything. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's it. That's the idea. Yeah. And, and cause I do a lot of, um, you know, I think we all suffer, suffer from depression and we all have ways that we get out of it. Um, what are some tips? It's kind of funny you talk about it. Cause I have a, a segment after we're done with you guys that I talk about, um, about trying to get out of a funk and like what we do and, and what are some things that you guys do when you find yourself in a dark space? How do you get out of that? Or like what, what you guys write lyrics, do you tailor the yeah. band? I mean, go on a walk. Like what are some of the things that you guys yeah. do? I, I find being, being idle is the worst option. Right. And that's what it does to you. It wants to freeze you up. It wants to like put you in a corner, turn out the lights. Um, so anything you can do to sort of, sort of fight against that, you know, and, and sometimes it feels like you're just kicking against the pricks because you're uh, you're trying to get out of it and it feels like it's getting harder and harder. But yeah, uh, remaining idle is the worst possible for me personally, right? So it is. Sometimes it's just as simple as um, getting out of the house. Sometimes it's as simple as getting back in the gym. Sometimes it's, uh, 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 you know, picking up the pen and the guitar and starting to just like, even if I don't have uh, an... Uh, uh, a spark, you know, of, of innovation and creativity, trying to like force myself into that space where I can, can try to express it and, and kind of write my way or, or for me, sing my way out of it a little bit, you know? Um, but that's me. I don't know, Jared. Yeah. Jared for you. Uh, for me, it's, I mean, sunshine, you know, outside being outside and, 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 and you know, sometimes if it's raining, it's less easy to do, but, you know, I find that, you know, if when I'm when I'm in a really tough spots, you know, the people that I, I surround myself with, the people that my friends, my family, my wife, my kids, um, who who are still there when I'm on the other side of my funk. So I've got someone, you know, that's got my back. And I, 
a solution for everybody. I don't know. I understand, you know, what that kind of, you know, is like, but, you know, building those support systems, like you said, it is honor among outcasts and it's what it is. If it's, you know, if it's not a wife or a friend, you know, then call me, call you, call Eric, you know, we're all there. So true. I think having that a support system, right? Mm-hmm. Um, people that we can lean on that have our best intentions at heart, exactly. um, which is yeah. a really big one. Um, and Jared, I kind of switch gears a little bit. I noticed that you are uh, giving credit for all the lyrics also with Eric. And I was I didn't realize that you were really big into songwriting also and collaborate. I mean, I know obviously you guys collaborate, um, but what was it like on this album? to be able to collaborate so much amongst like with the lyrics and how it is together? Uh, well, I didn't really come up with a lot of the lyrics. Um, uh, I, I think where with Eric and I and our songwriting, um, I, w- I wouldn't say it's a totally even split between music, you know, and lyrics, but you know, there, there's a lot of bleed through where I'll write a, uh, some guitar and Eric will put some lyrics on it. Um, I've been trying to write lyrics for the last 20 years <laughs> sometimes it's 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 a lot more uh appropriate and 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 better if if i'm sort of helping contribute um maybe a little details here and there maybe you know changing you know the composition or, or something you know something like that and so and even on this song uh you know eric even uh wrote the music you know on on, on at least one of these songs um on the album so it's it's a nice blend but you know mm-hmm. It's it's almost impossible for me to to write, you know, a complete song or a thought, you know, in a in a silo by myself. It's it's definitely a collaboration. I actually I, I thrive yeah. on. It, so, so and then yeah. with with drive with uh, drive on, did you guys uh, come up with the music first for that? Was it lyrics first, and then you found the tune? How was that that one put together? Yeah, that's that's something I was gonna say uh, in relation to what Jared was talking about too. Is that that collaborative effort and the fact some songwriters have like a very specific method, Jared and I, we have the collaboration method. It's not, there's not one way, right? Like I may walk in with some lyrics and a tune in my head and we sit down and figure out the music and the arrangement and everything. Sometimes Jared just writes a badass riff and I'm like, got an idea right there. Like, keep going, let's keep going, you know? And I'll start thinking about, you know, kind of, uh, the, you know, it's, I mean, as, as a songwriter, we're all emo, right? So, you know, yeah, it'll, it, so it gets true. <laughs> or something, I would hope you know, we all would be. <laughs> right? So it sparks an idea or a feeling or something, and I can kind of start working off of that. Um, very rarely across our projects, and Jared and I have worked on several uh, different musical projects together. Uh, rarely is a song just written in a vacuum by either one of us. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's some point during the process. Yeah. Uh, even the song he was referencing 12th round, which I walked in and was like, here's how it goes. You know, it was literally <laughs> me just strumming some like open chords on my acoustic guitar. And I'm like, now make it rock and roll, you know? <laughs> <laughs> now do the magic, Jared, do yeah, the magic. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Pretty magic best on there. Right? Yeah. yeah. For, for, for drive on, I wrote the, the, the guitar part first, yeah. mm-hmm. um, just exploring new areas of the fretboard and, yeah. and, up with something it doesn't really sound like our original stuff it doesn't sound like our old stuff but i just couldn't get it out of my head and i showed it to eric and he was really excited about it and then he left um he moved away again <clears throat> after i wrote it so in my theme. Opinion, <laughs> it's the theme eric stop running away stop running yeah. away <laughs> when we were making this album we were come to the decision of you know, are we just going to re-release this or release the stuff that we had already written that's that we played before a hundred times and just never got recorded, or if we were going to add some new stuff? And Eric said, oh, "Remember that one song that I wrote?" You know, and I was like, "I still got it." <laughs> so, yeah. So luckily, it had never been used for anything else, and uh, so we pulled it right out of the pocket, and 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 that kind of started it going from being, you know, a short album to, uh, uh, you know, or singles or something like that to to doing a full album because we just had so much left on the table. And I'm so glad that it's actually the the first song on it because um, it is a new sound. It's a different sound, right? And it also, I've been, for me this week, I needed to hear the song. I've been struggling really bad with depression um, recently and rocking out this going deep in your album. Um, I kept going back to this song and I want everybody to listen to it. So this is Drive On and right here we are. So let's take a listen.
Nice. Well, that was their um, title opening song, Drive On, from their self-titled album, Drive On. Got dropping two days, so pick up their album anytime, anytime today. Um, you can get it anywhere on here and definitely support, 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 because you will not be disappointed. This is a bomb album. Um, another amazing song. It was really hard for me to pick songs to um, talk about. And I'm, I'm doing more songs. I told you I'm doing more songs than I normally do um, with my, uh, my mouthful of guests just because they're so good. <laughs> I was like, oh, we can do another one. We more songs you play, the less, the less we have to talk and make fools of ourselves. <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. You're doing an amazing job. Um, but you do have uh, a song on here. That I thought was actually uh it, it really re it very much reminded me of Oi, right? So it's uh red, white, and blue. Uh anytime I think one of the differences that I hear a lot between punk and oi is oi tends to have that like I'm I am happy of where I'm from. <laughs> and then that sense is like national pride a little bit, right? I'm a little bit more different than the anarchy of punk, but even inside of that, there's an anarchy idealism amongst oil like business right for example stuff like that where it's like just because like where we live we want to see our country become better be not do the bullshit right i mean i have we all have children right and i'm i am scared to see what my kids are going to have to deal with yeah right i mean we have social media coming through that like was if, if any of us had social media back in the day that would have been bad <laughs> We wouldn't be yeah. here talking today, that's for sure. No, no, my, my jail sentence would have been a lot longer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They'd have found me. Yeah. <laughs> Incognito, right? Um, but, you know, and I think with, you know, we do have, and I don't, I told you guys, I don't normally do too much in politics, but I do think that it is important to talk about what climate that we are in as a society and where we go. And we do have a lot of, we have our elections coming up this year. Um, a lot of like shit and shit to pick from. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of like, really? This is these are our these are our options. Wow. Yeah. Um, and it's 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 discouraging, right? Having me look at why should I even care to show up? Why should I even involve myself in politics, right? When it's all rigged. I mean, that's kind of how I I look at a lot of of the system that we are kind of in and what where i want to kind of like volley back and forth to you guys when you were writing this song right and putting the song together right you're you're directly confronting you know white nationalism um fascism right stuff that completely tears down our society right and and keeps people segregated and removed um and what are some of the what are some thoughts that you guys might have that we could do just as a society to try to to come back together, right? To build, you know, a, a build a better a better way for our children to be. Yeah, I mean that's a very difficult question, a multi layered question, right? I mean this is an issue that uh, uh, you know dissertations or people build entire careers on talking about this stuff, right? So. Uh, where where do you begin? I don't know. But to your point, um, yeah, I think that, first of all, we don't really consider ourselves a political band. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, when, when we look at what's happening, we've always been social observers and social commentators. And um, and I would argue that that's what this song is really more than a political statement. You know, it's uh, it's uh, a look around. I'm concerned about the future. Um, you know, uh, you knew my daughter when she was a baby and you just saw her at the show the other night, you know, I know that old. was by the way, amazing. Yeah, right. That was the first time she'd seen you live. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Didn't even think about that. Yeah. That was <laughs> I mean, but yeah, yeah just live on stage, live consider. on stage, not live in person. <laughs> okay. Like he's a, he's a present dad live on stage. <laughs> She met me for the first time. Folks. For the first time. On the Mori Povich episode. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, I mean, there, there are a lot of things that are, that are wrong. And I think that right now we're getting a, a very good uh, glimpse into just how, how bad things could possibly uh, be. And I think there is an actual threat to um, what sliver of democracy we have left. Uh, and it's been the rise of, of, of this sort of, um, what I would argue uh, would be want to be fascist element, you know, or it's the, it's the same people 
uh, God, there's so many, so, it's so hard to talk about this stuff, right? You know, but it's when you see, when you see the same people that are like, like flying their Gatson flags and have the mm -hmm. stickers on, you know, don't tread on me stickers on the back of their trucks and whatever are the same people who are against equality, who are anti-education, who are anti, you know, uh, progress and democracy, really, you know, it's like the whole concept of freedom and liberty in this country uh, is, is uh, you know, is, is what it was truly founded on, right? And, uh, and we have people who are claiming to be patriots and the people who are claiming that they want freedom and liberty, but what they really want is like entitlement for themselves. They want to be they want to remain on top. They want to remain in power. They don't want to cede, uh, even if it doesn't hurt them at all, to give someone else, you know, uh, an equal footing in our society. They don't want it because they feel it somehow diminishes them, right? So mm -hmm. um, that's what we talk about when we get into these, you know, just the, the, the hate speech, the division that we're seeing in the country. Um, this idea that, like, being a bully is okay now, you know? We spent our whole lives teaching people that, like, bullying was wrong. Uh, and it is like just morally wrong. Right. Um, but now it's some, somehow being celebrated by this, by this element, uh, that, that's out there in politics. Um, and how do you fix it? I don't know. I mean, there are things obviously like, um, you know, the, the candidates that were presented with this time for president are an absolute mm -hmm. insult to the American people and to our intelligence and to our, you know, ability to, to better govern this country. Right. We want to make choices that help us move forward. And instead, we're all just forced to make this choice of like, you know, it's the, the lesser evil, right? I mean, I hate that term, but that's what it comes down to sometimes. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't, these are not good options, but I really like this option way less than the other, yeah, option. The other option. I yeah. still have like to go weighing, out there, right? Weighing, weighing the shit in your hand, which exactly. shit is more tolerable, right? Yeah. Which shit might but not I've still got to go out there and I've still got to, I've still got to <laughs> give my opinion. I've still got to go cast my vote. I'm still going to make the yeah. effort, right? You know, and I, and I think and that key, key yeah. what you said too is cast your vote. Yeah. Right? Even if you decide not to put something down, I mean, I get it, especially if you're not knowledgeable in an area, please don't just bubble in enough. It's just a bubble, right? If you don't know it, just don't put it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, you know, look at the laws. And I always talk about, you know, look at your local laws because those are usually ones that are going to have the biggest effect for us is what is your state? Life. What are your locals? Yeah. Right. Where are your children going to school? All of that. Um, that's going to have one of the bigger impacts. So definitely to um, to go on. Yep, absolutely. All right. This is red, white, and blue.
All right. And luckily we are online, so it doesn't matter about the cuss words. <laughs> it was all bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> so if I could say one more thing about that song. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like lyrically, it's kind of chaotic, right? And I try to represent that it's not necessarily a, a even a left right thing all the time, that you know, there there are greater issues within our government that really it's about it's about a, the working class, right? It's it's the class issue. And uh and I believe that if if the working classes, they truly do have the power, right? So if, if they can come together, stop stop listening to the politicians and the partisans and actually focus on what's best for the working people in America, I think that's where we can have some real success in making change to your earlier question about how to change things. I think that's where the, the only power that we have left as a people lies, you know? And it's true, because I mean, think about it, our middle class is shrinking. And the working class is middle class. I yeah. work 70 hours a week yeah. and I can barely pay my bills. Yeah, 100%. I work 70 hours. Like I'm yeah. exhausted. Well, <laughs> it would be you know great I mean? if that was just your story, right? And it was like an amazing <laughs> story of perseverance, but it's not. It's That's common now, right? That's what that's what we have to do. It's, uh, two, and it's usually, a lot of times it's two parent houses even that have to work 70 hours each. True. Right? And yeah. then who's suffering is our, our kids. Yeah, that's right. All wanna, right, go ahead, please. Real quick, I just want to bring up that that <clears throat> our guitar Spud wrote the vast majority of the music on that. I just did oh. the leads on that. So, you know, in our on our first album, we had what we called the the Spud song, uh, or I, I guess that's on here too. So this is sort of our second, you know, our, our second one. So this, you know, he's got a, a distinctive style. And I think that's what you're you're commenting on, you know, on the earlier. And the second thing I want to say is that on the on the fuck yous in in that song that's actually uh eric's uh, eric's two kids and my three kids that are singing along in the back <laughs> are you serious that's awesome <laughs> yeah photos and some videos because they you know they were hiding from mom they didn't want to say that cuss word but they had to catch it. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get them in trouble <laughs> yeah. well it's you know it was appropriate it's about the future like that's what it you know, is yeah. and that's what i think i think that you know one of the things that it's it's teaching the next generation they're going to have to fight for what they want and i think that's kind of almost every generation right every generation's had to fight for something better i mean we yeah. are a lot better country than we were 200 years ago yeah absolutely i mean we really are i mean so when you look at that you know continuing and that's one thing i think that like oi punk or any rock and roll blues hip-hop rap right any of that what it is is saying we're not going to just allow you to roll over on us yep Right. We want better for ourselves, our kids, their kids, and so on. So, yeah, I dig it. it. Love it. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and talking kind of about like blues and rock and roll and stuff, um, there yeah. is a song on here that is very different uh, than your style, uh, which I was like, I, I, and it reminded me of um, Joe Bonamassa. Do you guys, you know him? The Yeah, I think everybody knows him. All right. I'm like, do you know him? That's a good dumb question. <laughs> Do you know the amazing Joe Bonamassa? Um, I saw him live, blew my mind, right? I was like, his stage presence is on a whole nother level. I mean, yeah. the guy was, he's a, he's a guitar prodigy. I mean, he's, he's all that in a bag of chips um, and a great person. And your, your song that you have, um, Disease, really resonates blues with me, like that blues rock and roll. And so where did this song come from? Because it's well, so different all, we... than every other song on there. Yeah, we we love that shit. We love the blues, rock and roll stuff. Uh, and that song was actually written back in like probably 2005, 2006 originally. And we're just now getting around to recording it. But uh, I'll let Jared speak to that because he's he's a truly great blues guitarist too. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I would consider the blues to be my my fundamental style, and 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 not being I don't know sure exactly how to say it, but I was never compelled to pursue blues as a you know as, as, a, as a genre for me for me um but i don't know i think it was a bruisers album that i listened to that had that tinge of blues or something that was in there that really got me in my mind i was like rock and roll is just blues played fast um yeah. and <laughs> it is roll played fast so i'm like there, there's got to be a connection thinking you know what would the dropkick murphys be if they were a blues band instead of an you know an irish band and 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 that's that's why you hear so much blues in our music and some of the stuff like that song's hard to pull off live because it can it can kill the vibe um but sometimes when you do pull it off you know you have people eating out of your hands because you have all that room to 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 
stole that guitar um, in, in the lyrics. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely, I, and, and this is, like Eric said, we never got a chance to record it before. And uh, I think the whole band was pretty happy with the way that it, it ultimately came out. because It's got a really good groove. And, and again, I got to go back and say, you know, Chris, Shallon, Spud, our rhythm yeah. section really turned, you know, something that could be dragging, that could be kind of, you know, not, not easily listenable in this genre. Uh, into something that's really groovy, yeah. Yeah, yeah that song's a whole vibe for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you had a you were lyric in here that really touched me. Um, I couldn't find my place in life. Uh, sorry, so it started when I was young. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find my place in life. Yeah. Um, what is what 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 is your like what what is your disease? I mean, the name of the song is the disease. You're talking about it. Like, what is what is that for you? Because I think we all have our own monsters. We all have our own thing. Right, that destroys us, destroys the people around us. Yeah. Um, and, and what, what's, what is, what were you, got, what were you singing to for that? Yeah. Um. It was. Uh. It was a. You know. Again. You know. Things spark these these songs, right? But then they just kind of become ideas, and I write about the idea. Um. The. Uh, the idea here was was that you know that that from a very very young age, you know, I just I felt different. I felt misunderstood. Um, I felt like there was some, you know, like cognitive dissonance. There, there was something that was keeping me from just being like everybody else, thinking like everybody else, uh, making the decisions that everybody else was making. But the, um, you know, so it was, it was, it was sort of that that it's that stage between, um, but when you're super confused and you don't understand what's going on in your life to sort of accepting, you know, the fact that the, that it's, that it's not all bad being different. Isn't a bad thing necessarily that having this uh, kind of divergent way of thinking and approaching life and society isn't a bad thing. Um, but also acknowledging that along the way, while I was trying to figure all of that out, I was, I'd hurt people and I'd hurt myself and I'd made poor decisions that weren't just impacting me. They were impacting others. Um, so, you know, again, speaking a bit to the, the mental illness aspect, you know, uh, trying to struggling with that um, as I as I went through uh, the younger years of my life, um, you know, broken relationships, um, broken hearts, my own, others, you know, just um, uh, you just. Yeah, I, I guess that's it, you know, just sort of sort of that journey to figure it out in all the things I fucking broke along the way, you know, so it's more of a. Uh, almost like a, it's it's remin I'm reminiscing almost at that point, you know, when I when I'm singing the song, but also trying to acknowledge um, my role in you know all of those things that that occurred during that that time of my life and that space in my life. And I mean, what am I saying? Like I'm still trying to figure it out, right? Like I'm doing better now than stop. I was there. I don't think we ever stop trying to figure exactly. it out. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, reminds me of you talk about like Japan and there's this. Um, art style that mm. if something breaks like a pottery right yeah. um, that's been passed down in generations and so on they don't throw it away they actually glue it back together with gold yeah i love that um, and so you see these beautiful pieces that are handed down generation for generation and it's re put together and kept alive and mended with this gold glue yeah. Um, and I feel like that's kind of us, right? Yeah, like, absolutely. I don't know if we were born broken in a way or shattered or what that is, because there's a feeling of being outside of what we should be. Right. Like, there's this there's this real thing. Like When I say there's a monster inside of me, that's yeah. a fire, a, a, an actual thing inside of me, it really is. Absolutely. Right? And then learning out how to heal that. And I, and, I, and I don't know where that goes, but it always has that imagery I think about. But you guys, but being in Japan together, it popped <laughs> in my head about where... We might be broken, but we can heal. Right? Absolutely. We don't need to just be discarded. So Yeah. And that is a All big right. part of what that song's about. It's about the process, right? So being able to come out on the other side and sort of reflect and recognize uh, what you've done instead of continuing to just make the same mistakes over and over again. But uh, I know in the song, too, it kind of sounds like I'm almost celebrating it. Um, but, you know, it's it's one of those, like, you got to laugh so you don't cry. That's right. Situations too, right? That's right. So true. All right. Well, this is Disease off of their um, long anticipated album, Drive On. Well, I 
woke up this morning with a big pot of milk missing And knowing the cold hard truth doesn't stop all the wishing Cause I could have done things different, yeah I could have made a change Instead I fucked it up again, so I know I'm still the same disease off of their uh, long-awaited album drive on that is available today um, you can pick it up definitely please support 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 bye 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 um, download 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 it is it is worth the full listen all the way through so thank you very much for coming on today and also thank you listeners for hanging tight this is by far the longest interview I've ever done um, so I was just messaging them and I was like um, can I have 10 more minutes <laughs> I was in the private so, chat, like, I'm really sorry I talk so much. <laughs> and I was like, I think I, I, we all talk a lot, which is wonderful. So it's been it's been great listening. Otherwise, we wouldn't have people listening on here. And I'm just really, really happy to have you on here, not only just as friends, but as a fan. I'm a massive, nice. massive fan and always have been. So it's really great to, to I don't know, dive deep with you on your yeah, music, fun. which is nice. Uh, and so the very last song I'm going to play on here uh, is, it's kind of funny because it reminded me, I call it like my anthem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, um, so the song is called Shit Show. 
And I'm gonna legitimately say, like, I think you guys might have wrote it about me. I mean, I know you probably <laughs> didn't, but like, I'm pretty sure that was me. Um, because this is one reason why I don't drink um a lot. I mean, I do I still partake a little bit, um, but no more blackout nights, no more um, no more rowdiness because um I have woken up many a times to a fuck you <laughs> myself. <laughs> Yep. And I was like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, and all I know is uh, I like to drink, fight, and fuck. Um, those three go hand in hand um, and not always in a very positive way. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, that depends why you're such a fan of the band. <laughs> very true. Very true. Which I'm so surprised. Surprised you guys are still my friends. So, so we still surprised. love that stuff. We just do it in a more responsible way now. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, which is, which is always fun. So tell me about, tell me about shit show. Um, who, who, where did this come from? Who are you guys <laughs> thinking of? Uh, is it yourself you're thinking that you're talking about? Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think this is another case where, uh, you know, the, the, the spark leads to the idea, right? So really in, in, uh, in total, this song is just about anyone who has ever been a shit show. It's about anyone who's ever been in a toxic relationship. Um, it's uh, sure, yes, it's derived from a, a specific incident in my life. Um, but but once the really got into the songwriting, that incident became far less important. Mm -hmm. And through the process too, it wasn't just about like accusing someone else of doing something to me. It was about recognizing my role in the shit show you know, and helping Which create is why it. I think I liked it so much. It wasn't just yeah. like, I mean, we hear all the signs of the, the heartbreak song, right? You're right. an asshole, blah, 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 right? We yeah. hear it all the time. And what I liked about this is like, the the person, is like sometimes two people are toxic together. Correct. Right? Yep. And it's not it's always just one person. Sometimes the other person brings out the worst in both people. And when we're separated or healthy or no longer on, on drugs or binging, um, then we can heal. And I think that's what I liked about the song. It wasn't a blame song. Right. Yeah. Um, it was just like, this is a shit show. You're a shit show. And I am also a shit show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to turn that, you got to turn that lens on yourself sometimes too, you know? So uh, I'm a, I'm a big fan of doing that. I don't like to, to point fingers without at least taking a, a brief moment to, to look at myself in the mirror too. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. And Jared, for you, how is it like um, creating on the music on this song? Because it's, it's a fun song. I mean, this it is a was, fun song. Yeah, I think that, you know, that this one um, also being, you know, one of the singles that we had let out, it was kind of convenient. It was cool because those were kind of the two songs where I really expanded our sound a little bit, you know, with, with the riffs. And I guess I think I was just listening to a lot of thrash. And then so... <laughs> <laughs> It just kind of had that cool, you know, and, 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 and it was really fun trying to explain to, you know, to, to, to Spud and Shallon from across the country, you know, how I was doing that, um, that little riff. But uh, uh, it, it, it went from being, again, just like a riff, an idea in a room to a full on, you know, song once the whole band got a hold of it and, and turned it into, into, you know, a really good song. I was pretty surprised uh, by Eric, and, you know, when he came with the, the subject matter um because we notoriously don't do love songs um but he assured me this was not a love song so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's you know a love adjacent and i'm, I'm okay. no it was it's, it's marissa's anthem song <laughs> it's a great yeah absolutely now whenever you play the song you're like oh there's marissa no. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it um all right well this is powerful it's a powerful song and i and i and i, I think every time i listen to it i text eric and tell him how good a song i think and i'm like damn that's a freaking song man it so. is and that's why i didn't want to like finish the show off without playing the song right yeah. I mean, there's so many songs but i was like i mean i know it's your second release single right everybody you know he can get the song it's been around but it really is that good so Thank this you. is shit show off of their uh, newest album dropping out today drive on
love it. Oh, it's a comment from Allison. We're strong on the bullies, and we don't play no love songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we yes. used to open our sets back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so awesome. So awesome. Um, so, so excited that you all came on today, um, especially Thank on the you. day that your album is dropping. So Perfect. I really feel much, much blessed. Um, definitely pick up some merch. I have their shirt on as I stand here. Um, their shirt, Strong on the Bullies. And nice. I was just telling you, I have to grab a, um, a black shirt. I normally wear black shirts. And I was like, oh, there's not color code, but it's okay. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good looking shirt. <laughs> So grab sure. some merch from them. Definitely support, support. Um, you guys just played California. How was that tour for you? Great. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was honestly better than I could have even expected, I think. You know, uh, coming back after all this time, trying to do a, a four-show run up the coast. Um, we, we had we had more questions than we had confidence, and I think we, we had a lot of those questions answered, you know, uh, in the most positive way possible, like, we saw a lot of old fans. We we made new fans. Uh, you know, uh, the the shows were fun. They were tight. The energy was great. Um, I think all the all the things that you want as a band to kind of come together in those moments uh, came together for us. So we're feeling pretty uh, pretty good and pretty confident about what's coming up. Nice. And you're going to Europe, correct? Yeah, that's what's coming when? up. When is Europe <laughs> yeah. tour? Well, where, where can our my European listeners find you? Like, what's happening there? Yeah, so we're pretty excited about this. Uh, another one of those things we always wanted to do, right? So we're finally uh, finally making it happen. Um, big uh, big shout out to Rebellion Records, uh, our label over there in the Netherlands, and to uh, uh, Pogo Rush, the the promotion company, uh, Master Brilla, uh, putting it all together for us. But uh, we're kicking off so. I'm going to be singing with my other band, Live by the Sword, in, uh, at a festival called Among the Angels um, in Maastricht, Netherlands, on April 7th. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the very next day, we all hop in a van together, and uh, we're rolling out to uh, to Germany. We're doing three shows across Germany on uh, April 8th, 9th, and 10th. Um, we're going to be in uh, Brunswick, uh, Berlin, um, Hof. And then from there, we're going down to Switzerland and we're playing in uh, Chur, a very, very cool spot down there. Um, and then we're going to hop on a plane. We're going to fly down to Spain and we're going to do two shows in Basque Country, which uh, from from all accounts is the spot you got to play right now. It's like the punk rock mecca. So we're going to go check it out, see what it's all about and, uh, and have fun uh, playing there. And then we wrap up uh, on... Um, what is that? Uh, I think Sunday, the, the 14th or 15th, we wrap up in Madrid uh, oh playing God. with uh, with our buddies in a band called Porn Truck there. That'll be a riot. So if anyone from Madrid happens to hear this, like come out and party. It's going to be a really good time. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And any other um, local U.S. tours happening after that or still in the works? We got things in the works. We don't have any dates or anything locked in. Uh, we're definitely looking at some. Uh, some East Coast, probably some Northeast stuff. Uh, Florida is on the table, uh, I think. Um, so we're we're considering our options. You know, we got to do this uh, this kind of like part time, almost long weekend warrior stuff for the time being. Yeah. So understandable. Know, bills don't pay themselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got to balance well, pay the bills, play rock and roll, right? <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on today. Um, I just you. really on bottom of my heart. I appreciate both of you. Um, where so can much. our listeners find you? Where can they follow you? Where can they get their music? Help us out. Uh, well, they can find us on the, all the social medias, uh, the Facebooks and the Instagrams. I don't think we have a TikTok yet, but I think we're going to have to get one. Uh, we have a, a web yeah. store on um, uh, eBay right now, so we're, we'll, we'll be rolling that out on our social medias. You can find me. I'm strong at Strong Arm Axe Man. And Eric, what's your handle? I just do a lot of the band stuff. So look at Strong Arm and the Bullies on Facebook or Instagram. You get a hold of me. Um, yeah, we're out there. We're going to be putting some new stuff up on YouTube, some video we got from this uh, this last tour and stuff like that. Uh, yes, I was about to say, oh, that's right. Music videos. Give yeah. me music videos. <laughs> we're, we're working on it. We're working. It's in, it's, in, okay. it's, in, it's in process. It is. It's just been a slow <laughs> process, unfortunately. <laughs> All right. Well, definitely, when you do make a music video, let me know, um, and I'll play it on my show on here for you. So, Thanks so much for bringing us on. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate you, Eric, Jared from Strong Arm and the Bullies. Out now, day uh, second album, 18 years in the wait waiting. Drive on, pick it up today. Um, once again, if you love, like, love the show, obviously you had to have, uh, go ahead and follow them, find them, love them, like them, and do the same for me. And stay tuned because there is more left on the Marissa Pitts show. And there. Bye, you guys.